pushing the envelope, disrupting the industry is a big thing for us. We wanted I, I, to I disrupt agree, the. I agree. We wanted to disrupt the industry. When we came up with this concept, we don't want to do what the industry is doing. So today we're here at Workout Bar, which is a boutique fitness club featuring optimized, high-intensity interval training sensory immersion, technology integration, and social fitness. The Workout Bar program combines carefully selected aspects of cardiovascular training, functional movements, strength training, core stability, and flexibility to create a perfectly balanced workout for the body and soul. So today we have the founders, CEO, and architect of Workout Bar, Brian and Steve. Welcome to the Escape Minutes podcast. So, um, We've kind of got new world and old world going on, haven't we? We've, we've got the sort of traditional fitness box through one door and then we've got the sort of new future through the, through the other. Right. <laughs> Tell us how that happened. <laughs> um, having run the big sector next door, the big box facility, we realized that the trend in the industry is moving towards boutique fitness. Right. But the big box gyms were always had 3,000 square feet of wasted space. So. I put together an idea to bring in a box in the box concept. Right. Then creating a hit training workout boutique fitness style within the within the big box. Right. So we separated space and built workout bar. Right. Okay. So so tell us a little bit about, you know, bit of backgrounds on on you guys cuz cuz you're not both from the fitness industry. So tell us, you know, a little bit about each of you and and how you how you sort of came together. I've been in the industry close to 30 years, right. being a personal trainer, nutrition consultant, then about 10 years ago moved into the management side and operations. Right. Um, but the passion is in the sports science and nutrition and the fitness aspect. Um, functional training has always been my um, methodology of training clients right. going back years ago. So. That's pretty much how the concept came about, but having been in it for 30 years nearly, I've done every aspect from fitness to diet, to consulting, to now management and now ownership. Right, and you did you, you, did you start off personal training? Is that how you I started it? off more in the nutrition consulting, oh, okay. and then when I arrived in the United States 24 years ago, I went into personal training and then built the nutrition it's, on it's that, really and that there. was the first 12 years. Right. Then I had my own studio for about eight years and then moved into the management side and consulting big box gyms. Yeah. And that's how I came to right. end up here. Right. And, and Steve, you're, you're not at all into fitness or wasn't into it. Is that right? I don't no, know. <laughs> yeah, maybe the opposite. Uh, <laughs> for me, uh, my background is uh, drilling exploration. Uh, so absolutely nothing to do with fitness whatsoever. <laughs> um, I managed to retire relatively early and uh, had a little bit of extra energy left over and decided to pour that into a first originally running um, and I would say that I had uh, quite a bit of resistance to going to the gym so I found that uh, threshold of walking through the gym to be quite intimidating if right. I had to be completely honest and so it's one of the things that we decided at Workout Bar we were really going to work on is making sure that, that that front door that entrance is super welcoming uh, because for me it's still recent, uh, you know, four years maybe ago I had gotten into uh, uh, improving my own personal level of physical fitness past running right into the strength training side and, um, and so I think that is one of the fundamentals of how we feel about Workout Bar is making sure that uh, the people aren't just uh, welcomed uh, past a, a normal welcoming uh, perspective when people walk through the front door. We're going to watch them through the technology that we have devised, which exists a little bit in other gyms, but we emphasize it a lot more. So we created a cockpit right. uh, where everybody watches and we watch it, everybody's heart rate. And it, it, just this week, um, every week for that matter, I, I think probably out of one out of every three people that comes into this gym, we have to take care of them. And so by virtue of watching their vitals over there, we uh, get a glimpse of whether or not they're about to uh, feel ill or something like that, right? And uh, we emphasize that a lot in our training. Yeah. And so that we come in here and effectively rescue them. And then this is why we created that lounge. We can take them right out of this environment because it is very stimulating. That was the goal for the people that have been here for a while. They, they love that, that stimulating the music and the energy in that environment. Uh, but it pushes uh, people that 
you know, have recently just come off the couch um, into overexerting themselves yeah. or get anaerobic, and next thing you know, they're, they're laying on the floor. <laughs> so we don't want that. <coughs> and we really, um, I would say, uh, is a, a, an emphasis towards those people. We are really looking to take care of them in those initial stages because um, I think the failure of a lot of gyms is in their inability to recognize that that person has got into that anaerobic state. That person has a very negative experience. Uh, they come to the gym once and they're, I'm never coming back, right? And that is the exact opposite of us. Right. We take them over onto the other side. We, you know, we give them water, we give them a cold towel, electrolytes. We really take care of them. And a lot of people now that have come through those doors, they won't, they won't leave this area. You know, for them, this is their little world. Yeah. Um, and they, they won't even venture into the other side of, of World Gym because that is very ominous over there. Right. But it was one of the, the things that we set out to accomplish was to make sure that we get them comfortable in this environment so we can start to work on their level of fitness um, and slowly help them gradually improve so that they, they want to come, yeah. right? The, I think ultimately everybody says in January, oh, I'm going to um, improve my fitness. I want to lose a little bit of weight. Um, but they don't stick with it. Right. And I think the reasons for that are negative reinforcement somewhere along the way. And uh, we endeavor to make this more than just a way of life, you know, a very holistic approach where we are doing things not just inside this gym, but also outside the gym so that there, there's a bit of community for sure yeah. and a connection that everybody feels. Our, our athletes, if they were in here, they would tell you that they uh, are making friendships in here that they wouldn't have yeah. otherwise. We all have something in common, yeah. and it's cool. It's cool. It's fun to be part of. So t tell me, uh, when, when we met last mm -hmm. time for a, for a drink earlier, you, you, you told me about when people come in and the, the sort of arm movement for the, for the um, uh, heart rate what, and, and, and how that is part of the experience. You, is, you want to sort of share that story, how, how it was, you know, good, created a, created a, it's a good thing, but it's created a, you know, how do you get people through? Um, is that something you're able to share? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're working on it. Um, the, that sort of concierge level service that we set out, um, I don't think we were quite aware of the connection that we were making with our athletes by virtue of sliding that uh, heart rate monitor on their arm. Right. Um, it's that connectivity that it brings and yeah. the pampering, I think. That's so, they, so, they, really so they come in and, and, and you've got, you know, some very welcoming people that are actually doing it for you. Name it? recognition and then they want their heart rate monitor and then that, that's the connection. Right. So, and, yeah. and they like to be pampered right. and welcomed and that they feel comfortable coming in here because it's not easy. It's not easy if you've never been in fitness to walk into a place and start exercising out of the blue because you know you need to. Yeah. So I think walking into front door, they wait for the front desk people to put the heart rate monitor and then they're coming in and everybody's talking, communicating and right. little competitiveness going on as well. Because yeah. that's what we can, we can control all the data from the heart rate monitor with the technology that we've developed and put right. together. So yeah. I think it helps a lot. And then the people like the results afterwards, yeah. it goes straight to their app. But the first thing they walk in is the arms out and they're waiting for the heart rate monitor. Yeah. yeah. So the, the piece we didn't anticipate. Yep. That was, uh, that part was probably a little bit luck, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to let go of it now because it's what people become used to. So right. there's a, the, I have no background in the gym industry, um, which is partly fun because I look at it only uh, exclusively from the uh, athlete's perspective. Um, and so I think that's refreshing. And as somebody well put the other day, they said, I'm not contaminated. By, by whatever the expectation is in the fitness industry, right? So um, these little extra things we do, like the heart rate monitor, if that is the catalyst that allows them to come in and feel comfortable here, well, then we're, we're going to keep working on that. We're going to build on those right. types of things that keep uh, strengthening those yeah. connections and relationships. And I, and I guess also, in some ways, it, it does break down that relationship of, you know, you, you're almost standoffish. And, what, you know, when you actually touch someone, even if it's touch their hand right. or their arm, you're you know, you, you're connecting with making them feel a little bit at ease. And I guess back to your point where you, you in a lot of gyms, you do feel intimidated. You're, fr you're afraid to look at people and right. if they're looking at you. So I suppose that touch maybe that, that does break down some of those barriers and insecurities possibly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because most gyms you go into, you've got a name tag, you're going through a turnstile, you swipe your barcode right. and then you get, if you're lucky, you get a towel. 
yeah. and that's it. But we're behind this, we're on this side of the front desk, not behind talking to the people. Obviously, we're trying to remember every single person's name who walks in the door, greeting them by their name, and people yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah. And the connection. <coughs> that's right. So, how, how did you, you guys are very different backgrounds. How did you and the team sort of get together and, and sort of come up with this? How, how did that, that tell, us, tell us that story. I came up with an idea of creating a hit workout boutique fitness, right. um, showed it to a couple of people and then I got introduced to Steve, the other gentleman who runs, who owns the big box gym, Right. put it together. Steve was interested, we enticed him with some good looking equipment and good ideas. Right. And then he jumped in and never turned back really. Right. So, and, and how, how long did that take then from sort of you, you having the idea and I guess there was some... The idea stewed for the first two years that I was here, well the first 18 months you could say, but so from you, the moment I showed Steve the idea, right. um, literally a week later we had lunch and pretty much penciled a, an arrangement on a napkin, really? literally, and then Steve's like, okay, tomorrow we start and never right. stopped. So and you're, you're been, involved in the in the world gym big box i was the general manager of the, the big box gym right. and moved over here now but literally from the moment steve saw the idea we had one meeting and that was it and ironed out the, the small details and then he went to work on the design because i had no clue of the of this design being the the end product i right. knew this <laughs> I knew the science that i wanted to do and the kind of curriculum we wanted to create but right. i had no idea where th that this would end up like it did. Right. And did, did you just sort of see, look, see what was happening in the industry, see a yep. trend and say, look, we need to be evolving what we're doing? I knew the trend was moving to boutique fitness, right. um, studio operations, not long-term memberships, no contracts, no enrollment fees. Um, we work for the client. Right. We're lucky to be here serving the clients. That was the culture that, and it still is the culture that we're creating throughout the company. Right. Um, but I knew this is where the industry is trending. And I knew functional training, obviously, is where it's trending and, and has been for a fair amount of time. That right. big, big weight training machine equipment is phasing out. And even the big, a lot of big gyms are now opening up and not putting in all the big weight lo plate loaded equipment. Right. Um, because the science has proven that functional training is what the skeleton does, yeah. functional movements. So the curriculum was built around where the industry is and where it's heading. Um, right. So I knew it, we have to get into this yeah. um, sector. And how easy was it to convince? I guess there was, you know, this is quite, quite an investment. How, how easy was it to convince the, the group that put the money in to, to go and, you know, sink? Yeah, it wasn't secret. that difficult, <laughs> no? but I don't think, yeah, it wasn't that difficult. No. Um, putting it together was our biggest component of providing a high-end boutique fitness facility. Right. Um, we knew it wouldn't be cheap. Yeah. We kind of had an idea, and, but it wasn't that difficult to say this is what it's going to cost. We knew what it, in, a, in the nutshell what the right. investment would be if you wanted to create yeah. this kind of competitive um, boutique fitness right. setup. And when you went into it, was you what 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 was the vision? Was it that we just we want to do one studio to sort of help out what we're doing in the world gym side, or was you know did you go into it with a bigger vision of what the what vision you were was for? to really first component was to create a box in the box business model yeah. and then develop this, prove the concept here, and then go around to all big box gyms and say roll it out and put this facility into your gym because it's a revenue generator. Right. Then we also knew that there's a growth in the standalone business. Yeah. And so the vision was the box in the box, but we also knew we had to go with a standalone and probably a franchising right. um, business model. Yeah. And with, with the, the, your other partner that's in the big box, I, I think they've got a lot of clubs. Is that right? They're sort of pretty invested Sports in that. Sports World, yeah. Yep. Sports World, yeah. What, 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 you know, what, what were their thoughts? Because I guess, you know, a, a huge amount of incomes coming oh, I, from a very... I, I, I think skepticism in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, really, until, you know, you can, you can uh, try and explain vision, uh, you can do the renderings, um, but until something's actually built and you're able to experience it fully, um, I, think, I think it's difficult 
to be able to sort of jump on board. Um, and then there's, there's, there's sort of the people that are very invested. Of course, they jump on board you know, relatively easily. But once you start seeing other people come off the street, and they don't just gravitate. I mean, they, they love this place. You know, and they give accolades on Yelp reviews and everything else. Uh, and they become evangelical. That's, that's when you see the real difference. Um, and that's when you, know, you can uh, start to get something, uh, somebody like Sports World on board. Right. But until they see a little evidence, yeah. Uh, yeah. well, you build it and then we'll see. Yep. Right. right. Prove your concept first and then we'll get on board, which is now happening. Yeah. Yeah. And, and do you think, and, and I guess you guys have got the benefit of seeing both worlds. As I said, you go through one door and you're in the old and, and this is the new. Do, 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 what, do you think as, as, a, as an industry, the, um, you know, how, how would you describe the, the traditional gyms for, you know, after being so involved in them and the new gyms? And, and what do you think are some of the main differences between what you're doing here and what you and, and, and a lot of other businesses like the, the other side are, are, are doing? You know, how, what, if, if you had to sort of pick some of those key things, what, what's, what's the big difference? What's the secret between the two? I think the key thing is everybody wants to offer an elevated experience and give you this high priced facility, but not many people are following through with giving the elevated experience. Um, and that's really what we're putting through here. People can talk about it all day and say, yeah, we need to give all the best and all the best, but are you really giving the best? Here in this confined small boutique fitness, we're giving the best service, not just talking about I think, it. I think it goes beyond that a little bit as well, though, in that these people that go over to a big <coughs> box facility, um, they, they have to have um, their own personal motivation to show up. Right. And for anybody who's worked out or done strength training or, or hard running or hard cardiovascular, um, it can be arduous, certainly at times. And you know you have to will yourself, and it creates, um, you know, for most people, I think it's it's it takes a lot of time to be able to create those good habits. Where again, this is another thing that Workout Bar aspired to be, which was we make this environment. It's not we talk about welcoming, but beyond welcoming, it's downright fun. You get in here, and the energy levels immediately. You you feel them when you're in here, and uh, you know, as a lot of people had explained to me, they they started dropping their other fitness programs to come here. Why? Because why do we go to a big box gym? We go there because we should, right? Um, we, w we want to feel better about ourselves. We want to have a better level of fitness. Um, maybe we want to lose a little bit of weight. And then after a while, you, you get into this habit and you kind of need to go, right? If you don't go, you start to feel it. And I think for anybody who's been to a gym for a couple of years, they, they really feel like they need to go. What have we done here? something completely different. People want to come here. We've created desire, and I think that is rare. Right. I think that's the, the part that is missing in most of the puzzles, and I think that's the difference between that big box style of gym and what you see right here. Right. Right. So they have their own personal motivation and dedication as opposed to this place. They just want to come. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Good, good observation, and I would, I would agree with it. I, I, I work out in that type of facility, and I've done it for 30 years of my life not everybody's done that but I do it because I love it and it's just I, I would do it you know I, I'm just self-motivated to work out but I think a lot of people are not and even even me being into it there's a lot of times where I think oh shit you know yeah what am I gonna do today and like at the end of today you know I'll get back late and it's like oh do I really do it and I guess what you've got here you you've got that support to kind of get you in the doors get you through your workout and then after it you feel good anyway you know and well what really ha sorry to interrupt what really happens is a lot of times when newcomers come in here they the normal thing you hear from people when they're saying is is it nearly over when people come here that one of the things I cannot believe it's over already right. I cannot believe I've done just under an hour of a workout because it is fun and the curriculum is based on a 60 45 30 component so the longest you're doing something you really dislike is only 60 seconds right. and then you're moving on or you're doing 45 and everybody can get through 60 seconds yeah. and then they straight away moving and they never have to go back to that exercise that they dislike right. for 60 seconds right okay so when, when you came up with the original idea was it were there some key things and, and i you know, I know there obviously was, but what, what, or what were the key things that you set out to say, like, these are things that we are 
going to do differently and why did you choose those things to be very important? I definitely needed to have a circuit style training, right. um, moving along to keep the crowd moving within. Definitely wanted a sports science backing to the fun. Right. So that's where the heart rate monitor came in. Um, eventually we will hopefully put out nutrition plans through the app that we've created. So I wanted it to be totally interactive, fun music, good lighting, but from an exercise point of view, I needed three to four stations. Right. Um, we narrowed it down to the three just because <coughs> the instructor, it's easier for him to watch three groups than four groups, but I needed a strength and a functional and we needed cardio because we wanted to keep the heart rate in the fat burning zone. Right. Um, and also the HIIT training, you've got to get into the anaerobic threshold to increase your epoch. Yeah. Um, so those were all the factors when I was working on the concept and then working with the, the curriculum design. Those were all the things that we kept coming back to. Right. How do we make sure we hit all the, all the factors in the sports science aspect yeah. of it? Yeah. So we had to prove it. We had to be part of the correct sports science besides the good looking facility. Yeah. So you had the exercise component and what, what other parts were really important? The social side of it, okay. because people don't socialize enough anymore. The best they socializing is an Instagram picture these days. So feeling something after a workout, instead of ushering them in and out as quick as possible, we wanted them to hang out, feel that they can belong. Yeah. Um, and then that they would encourage their friends to work out with them. If you don't have a social aspect of anything, and a crowd that you enjoy being around, you'll probably work out on your own a few times and then it becomes, oh, do I really feel like going today? Yeah. So the social fitness is critical to, to the business model. Yeah. So those were the things, the sports science, the circuit training, and then the social aspect was it. I think the culture of our company. Okay. That is, that's where Steve came in and just, we have to have the right culture of that team. Not yeah. before we worry about the athletes and our members, we have to make sure we create the right culture right. of our, our group that works with us. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's very important to what we've done. I think it's a big deal. Yeah. I think it, it's more of a big deal than most people would uh, give credit to because that, if, uh, that holistic approach where we care about everybody, it, you know, it's easy in business to say, oh, I'm going <coughs> to care about my client or I'm going to care about the athlete. And then some businesses will say, oh, you need to care about the employees. The employees will care about your clients. We're, we're aspiring to be more than that. Yeah. You know, we actually want that to be 360. We want everybody to care about everybody, and we make these connections with our athletes when we come in. So we don't just know their names, we know their kids' names, and we know where they work. Um, we have a vested interest uh, in them, and they have a vested interest uh, back with the, the people. I'm told time and time again, um, sure, this place is nice, uh, it's great, and it's fun, but it comes down to the people. Yeah, uh, and of course that's the same to be said of, of any business um, or any business model. But how often do people really execute on that? Yeah, I, I think it's it's easy to say, super difficult to do. Um, but for us, um, we emphasize it. Uh, you know, not just on a daily basis, but realistically on an hourly basis. Yeah, uh, one of our um, fundamentals we we say we we script, rehearse, reinforce. So whatever we believe in. We make sure that we control that content um, so that we deliver the, the same message all the time. And then we rehearse it so that we're all saying the same thing. Um, and then we reinforce it until it becomes the way that we breathe. Right. Right. And that's what we were really looking for. And, and just to touch on that culture, like we had, again, we had a conversation the other day about how do you scale the, you, you guys are obviously here involved. I, mean, I think there's a conversation we had about one of the systems or something. You know, how, how do you take a very successful concept where the founders and the key people, investors are here all the time? And then if, you know, if you have which, multiple 50 facilities and you've got one in Mexico, how have, you know, what, what, what are some of the things you've done in terms of that culture to be able to spread that across a lot of locations you know it's easy to do in, in, in next door because it's fairly simple but this is you know you've got a lot of touch points here. So I, I think I think that's where when you build organically you know you are looking for those people who want to be here and ultimately that's what we're about is we're not looking for somebody to come out and so much bring so much of their excellence from somewhere else as uh, when we can organically build and grow each and every single person until 
they believe, we all believe in exactly the same thing, then I think that's how you scale. Right. So the people from this location, um, they are going to, you know, part of the draw of Workout Bar is um, the allure that we're going to build more of these, right? Our goal is to build 118. Right. Um, and in, in that goal, that provides opportunity for everybody along the way. And a little bit of fun, right? Like we're not just growing for the sake of growing, we're growing because it's fun and it creates opportunity. And we believe, right. ultimately, um, have, and, and the people that are here. Having that vision, and because a lot of people who come and work, they don't really know where the company is going. We have a vision. We're yeah. building 118, period. Yeah. And they know that they're going to grow with us. Yeah. Um, so we're creating a future for all our staff that work with us. And that brings the energy yeah. back. So they know that, yep, they're going to grind it out a little bit for the next few months or the next six to eight months. But we are going to open more locations. And yeah. they're going to be the ones who, like I say, help us duplicate the concept. Yeah. And I guess with these types of facilities, it's, it's very, you know, it's not, and we'll come on to technology in a minute, but it's not driven by technology, although that's a key component. It, it, it's really, and I came in the wild and last time and saw the classes running, the human part is, is huge. Uh, and and uh, it overrides everything, I think. The culture of our yeah. crew and our team that work with us overrides the good looking, the technology, the curriculum, all of that. Right. Again, it comes back to the human aspect. Yeah. of what we're creating. Still yeah. got a long way to go, but we're creating a yeah. quite a remarkable culture. And do you, do you think that's, that's difficult to create that and scale it? Or is it, you know, is it, I, I suppose for a lot of companies it is, but- It's not it, easy. I think it's <laughs> slow. Uh, I, I think whenever you're farming, um, I think that's a slow process when you're trying to grow something. But I <coughs> also believe that that process uh, helps uh, to create retention. Those, um, every, every piece of what we're doing creates loyalty, um, and we are also looking for brand loyalty. But that, again, um, if you take that holistic approach and uh, 360, I think it, it all starts to become part and parcel until, until everybody wants the same thing. They want um, and they desire to have the same thing. Yeah. Whether it's our athletes or the people that work here, um, they're all in it. Yeah. Yeah, so the people, sounds like that's pretty much up there in terms of some of the you know, things that make what you're doing different. So, so you've, got the, you've got the people, the culture, um, talked about the workout, talked about the social aspect, which I guess also supports that people culture right. side. Um, tell me a bit about the sort of the, the visual part, because again, this is, this is unique. Uh, there's not, <laughs> not seen a lot. So when we set out, um, to do this, you know, when I was talking to the other partners, I said, you know, when you get it wrong, people are happy to tell you that the lighting is wrong or the sound is wrong um, or the temperature is wrong. Uh, and they tell you all that. But if you really um, make an effort to nail every single little detail and you create that atmosphere, then they just say they want to be here. And so that's what we did. We set out to make sure that every single detail had a purpose, it had a reason, um, and that it was executed at 100% so that that atmosphere that is generated while you're in here, people feel it. That's what they'll say when they come here. We, we feel it. We want to be here. And that's exactly what we set out to do. And so all of these little pieces um, are all uh, part of that. Um, and Escape is a big part of that. You, when you look back at these walls and the color of the balls and uh, most of the coloring even of the kettleballs or kettlebells, that, that was a draw, that was an allure for us and it really started there. A lot of um, workout bar realistically is designed around what originally came from here. This was the foundation of what workout bar was going to be. This whole strength training rack back here, um, we knew and we wanted for that to be the piece that was going to um, give us something that was a point of differentiation from every other gym. Right. And, and I haven't seen it yet. Um, you might see one of these somewhere else, but you certainly don't see 10. You don't see 10, you don't see them organized like that, you don't see lanes like that. Um, and that we combined uh, the beauty of Escape Fitness products um, which I think was a catalyst for everything else that you see in here. Yep. Right. Um, this was my first um, 
uh, rendering that I saw had Escape Fitness products in it, and that was that was really the beginning right. of what it is we wanted to do, as opposed to, uh, I mean, the beautiful plyo boxes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> until that point, it had been uh, wooden plyo boxes for anybody who's been on them. That's it's not pretty. No. Um, and I think I think that part of the fitness industry still exists, but those people again they, they go back to more of that hardcore. Um, fitness, we're not about that. We wanted to make ourselves a place where people wanted to come. Yeah. And that, that is represented by all of these pieces in here. When every single piece comes together, that's where the desire forms. What was the inspiration of, of the actual look and feel of, of the facility? Because again, your, your social rooms, pretty, it's, almost, it's a little bit like a kind of, you know, you're going into a bar or a, a, a nightclub, I guess, in some ways, but quite up my, what, what would you say was your inspiration for, for the general design and feel of the whole space? We wanted to be attractive. Right. Um, and we wanted to be able to be seen from a distance. Right. right? Um, <laughs> that was you know, certainly part of the goal. The, the red floor is really meant to represent the red carpet treatment right. which you get to experience. So there's a, a lot of these subtle things that we do in here that um, people, again, I go back to that, that term feel but they do feel it. They don't know unless, you know, somebody like me or Brian or, or anybody else explains it fully. But all of those design comments, uh, the, even the, the different uh, atmospheres that you feel when you're inside the gym. In, in here, for instance, it's very energetic and it's red. It's meant to be that way. It's so that you're stimulated. This is part of the, uh, the audio, uh, visual, visual uh, stimulation that you get while you're in here. In there, that is meant to be welcoming. So it's very bright. Right. right? As many as you, you walk in people, it's a little bit of a wow factor, right? Yeah. And they're attracted for sure. And then when you get to the lounge, uh, you know, that uh, is more soothing and more relaxing. And it's meant uh, for you to be able to identify that we're, we're not working out anymore. Right. Now we're in here, we're going to hang out. And that brings apart that uh, social aspect yeah. that we talk about so much here at Workout Bar. And that's a big, big, you know, that's a big commitment to space. Um, is, it, does that re represent why that's such an important part for you, or is that just how the layout of it, because you, you can almost put another studio in there and some people probably would stick 20, 30 bikes in there. What, what, what's your thoughts? How would you respond? We, we wanted to be different. Right. We, we knew that for sure. Right. And that was you know, where that lounge idea uh, you know, first had its uh, first legs, is that we felt with, without it, we were just gonna be another gym or even perhaps another boutique gym. If we didn't have a place, for those people to congregate afterwards. Or worse, um, some people, especially in gyms like this when it gets busy, and we have a very short window in between, you know, when one workout starts and one ends, those, those people are, are they're, uh, interfering with the process of getting in and out of this gym. Right, okay. And they, they feel um, that maybe they would be pushed out the door, which is something we never wanted. We want them to feel like this is their place, yeah. right? And if you go back through some of our videos, we'll say, we built this gym for you. Right? And when we say that, we're talking to you know, every athlete that walks in this door. Um, and so that's what we really meant, is that after your workout's over, you have a place to go hang out. Maybe you want to talk about the workout. You want to talk about something else, even. Yeah. Right? It doesn't have to be so fitness-related all the time, and often it isn't. We have all kinds of, um, in the lounge, we host all kinds of events that aren't necessarily related to fitness. Yeah. But they're related um, by virtue of some form of well-being. Um, and that could even extend to financial well-being, right? Um, we all know about um, making sure that we have our fitness in check now, especially the types of people that are in here. But uh, you also need to have your finances in check. So these are, this is the type of stuff that we are trying to develop beyond and reimagine what uh, this area could be right. beyond fitness. We're, we're talking about trying to make everything better. Okay. We had a conversation about the sound system you've got in here. We talked about the lighting. Why did you decide to go, I suppose, so high quality when maybe you could have got away with a little bit less and maybe people wouldn't know? Is that because it was your first one and it was like, okay, next time we're going to shave it down? Or, or do you... Do no, 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 no. So no. again, it, it goes back to that experience. You get it wrong and people are quick to identify, oh, it's too loud. And so that the, the audio was a very big part of, of our experience in here. And you know, some other places that we had visited, their answer to having the music too loud, what I would um, call improper engineering or lack of 
any audio engineering period uh, is earplugs. And you know, so when I had to experience this, I, you know, I immediately just said to you, you just didn't put the effort into making sure that the experience was well-rounded. You know, you were just focusing on the workout or you were just focusing on the lights. And, and if it was people, if you thought that you could have provided the same level of concierge um, service that we set out to do, you're just doing one where it really needed to be all of it. And that audio is such a big component. Um, we, and I'm lucky, my wife is very sensitive to loud music and uh, she always tells me to turn it down. <laughs> and so when I brought her in here and we first started doing our, our first bunch of rounds, she was my, my bar, my, my, um, my metric. And I said, is it too loud? And she said, no. And I knew instantly, she represents um, <coughs> a lot of women, but also a lot of people who feel that, uh, especially in gyms where they just turn the music too loud, mm. um, that it becomes uh, interfering with your ability to conduct the rest of your workout. Because you're, all you're thinking about is, that's just too loud, yeah. right? It's not good. Um, and, and so for us, it was, it was a big component. Every sure, component was sure we got it right. carefully researched from the sound to the lighting to the music, um, yeah. plus the workouts, obviously, yeah. the actual curriculum. But the sound was a key thing that Steve was spent a lot of time. Speakers were in and out, mounted, not mounted, floor, ceiling. And it is loud, you know, you, know, you feel it, but you, you're right. It doesn't, it doesn't sort of, it, it's, it's, it's obviously the right quality point in the right directions and, and balanced yeah. in the right way, I guess. Uh, and most people say to her, why don't you mount the, seat, the speakers? You're wasting floor space. There's a reason why they're on the floor and not, not mounted on the walls. Right, right. Because then you have to turn it up louder. So there's all of these factors so our, were... You know, just for instance, our, our sound system is uh, engineered at a level which is about four times what is required for this amount of space. Right. And so what that allows us to do is actually turn the volume down. Right. So you go to most gyms and they're turning it up. We turn ours down, and so these speakers don't have to work that hard, or they're working yeah. at in the mid-range where they're supposed to. And you feel it. It's immersive, right? Yeah. You feel it in your body when you're doing your workout. And that's, that's part of what Brian is saying. It helps to drive those energy levels, you know, coupled with our selection, uh, you know, curating the music yeah. to make sure that we are... Um, we have a range of music. So tell us about that, because hmm. I, I guess w difference is you're not... So trainers not coming in, sticking on their iPods and just putting some stuff. It, 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 explain what you guys are doing. It's, it's another, another super difficult piece of the puzzle. Right. right. Um, you have to understand your demographics. Um, you have to bring the music that um, coincides with the tempo of what is expected out of each athlete. So in your 60 second, um, interval that's meant to be a little bit slower as you do your 45 second interval we're gonna we're gonna speed that tempo up a little bit you're gonna feel the music pick up right and you your energy level is gonna pick up and then that last all out push for 30 seconds we're gonna have some pretty high um, BPM music that is gonna help to drive you through that last little piece and try and get you a little bit anaerobic right, right. that's so we can facilitate that whole concept of hit so you have to find that exact perfect 30 seconds with the right lyrics, with the right BPM for that right exercise. You, so you can't just sit there and play dance music all of the time. It's not time. that, that easy. Fly. You have to find music that people can relate to. And, that, and that, how often is that music changed and updated? Every oh, week every there's week. a new every playlist. Week. But what happens is the instructor will walk in, the leader will walk in, and it's all ready. They just need to hit play. Right. And there's a reason why we do that as well is it can happen, the trainer oversleeps, doesn't show up for the class, front desk person needs to be able to switch it on and take the class. Right. And it's happened. Right. We're glad it happened. So we proved a, a concept that uh, were part of our, our plan worked. So the trainer overslept and that happens. Yeah. Front desk person hit play. He knew the curriculum right. and the lesson went ahead. Nobody knew. Right. And so every single piece has been thought out and we're always thinking of duplication. Right. How do we multiply this and can it work redundancy. on a large okay. That's That's why we're always, we're, we're engineering that redundancy into every piece of workout bar. Just, so that, uh, just explain that what you mean by redundancy. So each, every element that exists in here to deliver that experience has a redundant feature. There's right. a backup feature for how we deliver that experience. And it, it, it starts with the people at the front desk 
which um, some of them have the ability to come in here and actually be able to conduct a class in the event that the trainer uh, can't show up. Um, the speakers, um, we, we have, um, as I said, we over-engineered it uh, by a magnitude of four. So if one of them goes down, most people wouldn't know. Realistically, even if two or even three of them went down, they probably still wouldn't know. We still have the ability to conduct that class. Right. The way the music's delivered, the way the um, we have Wi-Fi, we have um, then we have connected Ethernet. Um, so we have different mechanisms to make sure that even if one part of our technology goes down, another piece of that technology will survive. So even for instance, all of our television sets that are up here, they're on different circuits. So if one set of the circuit goes down, the other set of the circuit is still up. So even in the event of some type of you know little minor catastrophes, you are going to get uh, probably I would say 95% of the experience right. while you're in here. A little piece might um, escape, but the majority of it is, is going to remain. And so for people, I think that's what they want. They, they want that consistency. Yeah, that's they want to know that somebody was in the background creating those redundancies. And I, I think it goes to the people that work here as well. When they feel that uh, somebody has thought through the process and created the redundancies and then taught them how to use those redundancies, it makes us all feel a little more at ease and comfortable uh, with what it is we're trying to execute on. And it, it leaves them with that energy to give back to the athletes. To focus on yep. what they're meant to be focused yeah, on. Yeah, and then it reduces stress. Because, because we're using so much technology in here, it, it does. It dies about once yep. a week. Right. But then they just look for the redundant feature, right? Um, especially, it, especially at a 5 a.m. class, if it's not working, you just go to plan B and plan B will help you because Athlete gets up at 4.15 to be here for a 5, 5 o'clock class. He wants it to work, yeah. or she. So we need to make sure that the team can execute and give, deliver the, the product that we want to deliver. Yeah. And in terms of the workout you mentioned then, so, so how often do you change your workouts then? Do you, do you have the same workout every day and then you change it once a week? Or what, to explain the, the So concept. the curriculum changes every month. So okay. Monday and Tuesday we do lower body and core. Wednesday and Thursday, upper body and core. Yeah. Friday, Saturday and Sunday, total body. Yeah. Those Monday, Tuesday workouts are different as well. So if you came Monday and Tuesday and did lower body, you're doing two lower bodies. Right. Wednesday and Thursday will be different and Friday, Saturday and Sunday will all be different. So the original goal is to get somebody to come in at least three times a week. So you come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're doing lower, upper, total. Right. But, and then every month the curriculum changes. Right. So the Mondays will be the same lesson all day Monday. And then Tuesday it will change, Wednesday it will change. So, so conceptually the idea behind that where we decided to, to leave it the same for a month is if you came every Monday, um, you, you get your data from your heart rate monitor and that's delivered to you via email. And it's also, it's rendered on the app as well. On Monday, for instance, had you burned 580 calories and you were, um, you know, five minutes in the uh, anaerobic zone, perhaps you were 20 minutes in the aerobic zone you'd be able to compare your own stats. So week over week, you can see if you're improving um, or uh, you know, why was it that you were able to uh, work this hard on this Monday and perhaps not on that Monday. And then what you have is you have some, a little bit of data, comparative data, which yeah. I always think is very important. And I think it, it's, it lacks in the industry where people just don't have the ability to compare. And then I think that's part of what frustrates them uh, and then they eventually leave fitness if they're not so overly committed, like you know some people are. We're trying to develop these mechanisms to draw people in so that th they're here for life, period, right? Without that super over um, commitment level that a lot of people feel towards fitness that you might find on that side. We're looking for those other people. Right. We're, trying to, we're trying to get them in and we're trying to give them those metrics so that they have something to compare to. Because I think that's what people need. Right. You know, with, with, with a measuring stick, you know, everybody wants to be measured a little bit, whether they believe it or not. And especially if it's under your own um, account, right? There's nobody else that is helping you to um, create your calorie burn. Uh, it's you, it's you. And you can see that, you can see it represented in a bar. And I think it's really powerful. Right. I, th I think it's important. How, how, in terms of people that you're focusing on then, would you say that you're, tapping into a different marketplace to next door and a different marketplace yeah. to what yep. your competitors are going and, and, and what, what is that and why? Well, our range is 
quite unique. We thought we'd get the usual demographics, 25 to 40 year olds, they'll all come in, but we're getting 11 year olds and 12 year olds working out with their parents and we've got a 73 year old guy working out. So I would say our, our initial demographics are not what we're getting. We're getting a much broader range. Right. And what's really happening is also a lot of our new clients are purely referral based. We're not even going and doing the old conventional advertising and marketing. No. Most of our new members is a friend bringing in a friend. We have a big referral program um, and they're just bringing in buddies all the time. This week, I think everybody that joined this week was all referrals. Right. No new people off the streets, I don't think. But we're getting a lot of kids working out with their parents, which is quite unique, where you see a little 12-year-old guy nagging his mother to come in. And that's quite cool, is to see these youngsters, these teenagers and that don't really work out. Right. And they hear almost every day with their moms and their dads. That's I, I think the most unexpected but delightful thing that we had happen here is date night. Right. right. Husband and wives, boyfriend and girlfriends, this is where they, they do their date night. Really? Um, and, and if you think a little bit about the music and the energy that goes on in here, it's pretty fun. Um, and, and so for those people, we've created this whole new way of spending a little time together, as opposed to your typical going out for dinner or a glass of wine. Yeah. They get to come in here and then they're connected. They have the same goal for that particular period. Well, if you're even still on that side of the gym, like you're in a conventional big box gym, um, Without the structure of, of making your round and without the ability to sort of leave your, your brain at the front door, um, you still have to think about what you're doing. We're here, you just get to be beside the one that you love and you're both just working out and you're having fun and you're sharing a smile. And when you're done, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed is those people leaving, um, they're all experiencing a little bit of endorphin rush and they feel good. They feel good yep. and as they're walking out the door, they're holding hands. Um, and we've definitely, We've, we've had some of our athletes tell us that they've bonded more for coming here. And that, to me, was the biggest, uh, best, and most delightful surprise for sure. Yeah. We had a family that came in here, father, mother, and four kids, all in their late teens, early 20s. And they all signed up, and the whole family of six come in here and work out together almost every night. And the mother and the father say the best part about this is seeing their kids and them working out together. Wow. And they here probably four or five times a week, the whole family, all six of them march in, they work out, they're all happy. And one or two of them never did the first workout because the youngest girl didn't think she could make it, but she's here with the family now and they're all coming in and they're bringing in their friends. Fantastic. So it's created a whole social yeah. environment now. Yeah, yeah. So what, what's the, what does the future hold? What's your, like it, it sounds with the level of detail that you're going in, it's not, purely financial, although I guess that's obviously a big part. But what, you know, what, what does it look like and where, where are you guys going? <laughs> We're going to build 118, right. that's for sure. I think, you know, <laughs> I, I, I had always had a goal, uh, which I wasn't able to execute uh, is to the point where I had in my old business. And that was, um, and, and it's easy to say that you want everybody that is in the gym to become an owner, but ultimately, um, uh, you know, one of our, our goals is that everybody here is going to, um, for lack of a better word, they're going to profit. And there's so many different ways to profit. Um, you can profit in terms of a monetary value. And we do need to have that level of uh, compensation where people aren't worrying about whether or not the fridge is going to break down and how they're going to be able to fix that. So for me, that's a very big component is to make sure that people are compensated enough so that they can concentrate on, on having a, a career here, right? Um, so that would be part of it. Uh, the second part is, is actually having true physical ownership. So in other words, uh, shares at some level, even if it's a small level, it doesn't matter um, because then you feel more connected. Um, and I think third, the, you know, the, the, the concept of you know, always trying to have um, a, a profit motive at a, at a level for, uh, let's say, if you're, if you're worried in the public sector, uh, 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 you're, you're trying to make money for shareholders. I, I don't think that's our goal. That's not, that's not really our goal. We're, we're interested in building a brand that is something different um, where people are simply just going to be drawn to it and they're going to have that ability to frequent this. So I think one of our goals is not just to have this nationwide or, or in Mexico and Canada, is to be going down that escalator at the airport 
and you see a workout bar express, right? And you have three or four hours in the airport, like, ah, I want to go get a little half an hour workout in, right? That would be a, you know, a great goal. Or what if uh, you were at a hotel and there's a workout bar? Cruise ships. There, right? right, cruise ships. If we can replicate this in a way so that uh, this place becomes, again, like I said, we want to reimagine how people feel about fitness um, and that whole approach, then, then that would be the goal, yeah. right? And I, I think any uh, prolific uh, businessman or entrepreneur would tell you, if your goal isn't always so much about money, sometimes the money just comes in the end anyways, right? right? So, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's better not to worry about that stuff so much in the beginning and, and let it develop. And I think if you do, then I think the culture builds a lot stronger. Yeah. And I think the foundation becomes a lot stronger. And arguably, it's a, it's a little more fun. And with obviously 118 locations, you know, that with that comes a huge amount of capital required. How, how do you balance the investors who see this and are going to help fund that against the people who are prepared to sort of wait their time? You know, is that, is that a challenge to kind of get those right people on board? It, it is. And so, again, we have to get them to buy into the culture. Right. So anybody that is looking to turn a, a quick profit right away, I don't think that uh, we're that mechanism for them. Right. Uh, but in terms of investors, as we start to build up before we get into the franchise model, we will allow people, uh, investors, potential investors, to invest in the, the intellectual property, which allows them to be able to uh, live on with us in our vision. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we'll have bricks and mortar stores, something like this, where, and these will have cash flow. So that does give the investors sort of a two-part incentive to be bonded with us, yeah. where um, you can be paid uh, in, in one hand, you'll, you'll get to recognize that um, return on yeah. your investment. But at the same time, we want them, we want them to buy into our total vision. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So just before we finish, a couple of couple of quick questions then, um, and you can you can take it in turn. What gets you up in out of bed in the morning? <laughs> oh, that's easy for me. <laughs> it's the people that we work with here. Right. They completely motivate me to get up every morning. So uh, a lot of the people that are working with us, um, you know, they have this um, term millennial. And if I had a chance to sort of redefine that, um, I, I think I'd love to because I think that there is a negative connotation to that and I haven't experienced any of it. So for me, um, you know, whenever you get to work with people um, that are, are a little bit younger and they have that level of enthusiasm, they have that level of uh, investigative um, curiosity into how to make things better and you give them the platform to be able to um, aspire to something better that's what gets me up in the morning right. and th th people have to be here at 5 a.m uh 4 45. uh we have you know young people working here and they it's not here. easy I'd, i wasn't yeah. getting up at 4 45. <laughs> that age we were, we were going to bed uh, we're just getting home and I, and I also <laughs> think that um you know part of my generation we spent a lot more time with our kids than the generation um you know our parents did and I think they become more confident. Um, and that confidence, um, it, 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 it works to the benefit of um, them being able to move forth on their own initiatives and try and create um, more. As opposed to when I think about like an analog style business or an old school type business, you have this top down mentality where you know all the ideas are generated up here yeah. and then they try and uh, push those ideas forth to all the people that are working down yeah, here, yeah. as opposed to uh, our, our vision at Workout Bar, which is we, if, if we were the actual shareholders, then we would be the ones that would be supporting um, all the people that are on the front lines, right? And we're going to help them, uh, and we are going to support them when they have a creative idea or creative initiative. Um, we, we have some currently, um, one of our guys came up with the idea of a blood drive. And it's nothing that I would have ever thought of. And I just loved it. Um, this is an opportunity. This is something that, that this particular individual happened to be passionate about. Um, and I, it, it speaks to everything that is workout bar, in my opinion. So again, it's not about money. This is about trying to create some type of connection uh, with everybody and, and giving back. Um, 
And we like to think that we have really good people here yeah. uh, that come to our gym, and they are really good people. Yeah. We nurture their ideas instead of suppressing most of them. Yeah. And you come up with an idea, go for it, you own it, we'll support you. Own you. It. Yes. you own it. Yeah. So that, like, that's, that's how we feel here. Um, that's your idea, you own it. And all of those pieces that are fearful, uh, standing in front of a crowd talking, um, we are going to give them that platform to be able to develop their, their personalities. And we're, we're gonna try and support them along the way. And, and if some of them get scared, then we're gonna try and be there and we're gonna try and help them. Um, mm -hmm. I also know what it's like to be scared. Um, and so I like to continually sort of push myself so that I can remember what it's like to have to do things you don't wanna do. Right. Uh, but it, you know what comes on the other side of doing something that you were a little scared of, there's usually quite a reward for that. And so that is, is uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and when you get to work with people who are interested in that and they want to develop their own uh, careers and personalities, um, a lot of the things we say that we do in here aren't just for developing your career inside Workup Bar. We like to think that you're developing um, your ability to build relationships across your board. Right. Right? So again, we go to profit or wealth, uh, and I think of the wealth of friendships and the things that maybe um, if, if we push you past your boundaries, of your friendships, you might find other friendships, um, mm. you know, and things that, that become valuable yeah. beyond the normal. Yeah, okay. How do you juggle the world of business with family and how do you get that right? I enjoy it so much, it's not work. Okay. Um, obviously, I'd like to work less, <laughs> but I don't mind driving. I drive 40 minutes each way to and from this location, but I enjoy being here. I could be a from start to finish every day. Yeah. Um, obviously, we want to be at home a little more or watch the kids play soccer, etc. But it's a startup; it takes work. Yeah. Um, nothing worthwhile is easy. So, Steve and I, we we know we've got to be here as, as more than we want to be, but we do want to be here. Yeah. So a lot, it's a lot of fun when you see people coming in and getting one new membership is a is a huge thing for us. It's exciting every time a member signs up. We're excited we about all it. We celebrate. We high five because it's fun. Sure. It's a great. It's a huge we, achievement we, when we, we get a new member. Electronic platforms for communication, right? Um, beyond just a regular texting, and we all celebrate. So everybody here um, has the ability to celebrate when a new member joins with us. Um, you know, we look to disrupt all of the old school terminology. We're not here to sell or close a deal. We are here to get somebody to join uh, Workout Bar. And that's an extension of our family, really, at that point. But we all celebrate. And, yeah. and that, that part, again, is fun. very inspiring when everybody is sort of rejoicing. Just, just over one or two new members, right? And, you know, when, when those people come in, um, it could be anybody in our group. They would say, watch out. Watch out for uh, Daniela. This is a new member coming in. Can, can we make sure that everybody welcomes her um, with everything we have, right? And we... We we're all working together to make sure that uh, those people really feel welcomed here. Yeah. And that, that's, it's inspiring, it's fun. Yeah. And the day you enjoy your job, you stop working. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> so um, I know you guys think differently. I've spent enough time with you to know you're a little bit off the wall. Where, where do you go for your new ideas and to, to, to push your business forward and to you know, think out of the box. So how, do, you, I, do you go to shows? Do you read books? What, what, what's your... I do a lot of shows. Right. I keep an eye on the industry. I get a lot of email websites that I'll keep an eye on. Um, that's how I've always done it, just seeing what's coming out in the next, the next year, the following year, not what's currently popular. So I've always had the knack of just seeing, okay, that's going to go far. That's going to be the next thing. That's going to be a bust. So going to the shows is huge for me. Right. Um, I try and attend as many as possible. Um, but again, the exercises are exercises. I remember throwing medicine balls around when I was seven years old doing judo. And the, the circle always come, it goes back around. Yeah. Um, but you've got to keep on top of it. You've got to see where it's trending from a business point of view and from a scientific point of view. Yeah. I read a lot of sports journals to see aerobics versus HIIT training all the science comes out. Um, the technology is very important. And that's where our team helps us because they're more techno, technology oriented than I am. I'm not a big technology guy, but I know what I need. I just don't know how to put the pieces together and they help us put it together. But the technology is huge yeah. and just the equipment that comes out every day. Um, what 
escape develop every day. It's, it's great because the medicine balls, the sandbags, etc. You've got to be right on the cusp of it. You want to be ahead of the game, yeah. not you want to be ahead of everybody else, not following. Yeah. So I've always been had the ability that I can lead on what I'm doing in the industry, and but keeping on top of the sports science and the business side of it is is very important. Yeah. To yeah. keep ahead of the game. Yeah. And do you, I know as, as a group, do you spend a lot of time thinking, you know, talking about ideas together as, as in terms of the, the sort of, yeah, the, the team of people, are you sort of, you know, do you get ideas from people and say like, this is, do you, I, I suppose, is, is a lot of these ideas driven from internal or do you kind of get a lot of stuff external? How do you, or is it about? Both. Our instructors give us ideas. Why don't we do this? Of course, let's try it. Let's do it. Let's get the curriculum involved. Um, Steve and I spend probably 23 hours a day thinking of ideas and coming up with ideas, talking all the time. Right. Um, we're in constant communication all day, every day. But a lot comes from our team. Yeah. The, the instructors say, hey, this is working. Let's change this out. We've had some equipment that didn't work because it was too bulky. We switched it out instantly. Yeah. Um, so everybody contributes to the decision. It's not just mine and Steve or Steve and my, my idea and that's, that's it. Yeah. It's communicated and until we figure it out, it's everybody, everybody has the same amount of input. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then final question, uh, it's probably to, to both of you, and, it, and I'll, I'll sort of position it as it relates to the, to the business, but Escape Your Limits is about overcoming what you have been told to believe is impossible, um, and then going ahead and making it possible. So what, what would be, in terms of setting up this business, what would be one of your most memorable examples of of, of you and your team escaping your personal limits? Um, wow, it's a tough question. Um, just pushing the envelope, disrupting the industry is a big thing for us. We wanted I, I, to I disrupt agree, the, I agree with We that. wanted to disrupt the industry. When we came up with this concept, we don't want to do what the industry is doing. We, we want we, to disrupt every aspect of what we're doing is we, disruptive. We threw out the idea of contracts. We threw out the idea of uh, penalizing our clients. Um, there, there's lots of established uh, ideas in the fitness industry and we pretty much anything that we thought was punitive towards a client um, we immediately put up a wall and tried to find another approach so if I could cite an example I guess somebody had said to me I was in Mexico City recently and they said well what do you do when you have no shows um, you know we're thinking about implementing a penalty and I said, yeah, well, there's, I said, there's always two ways of, of accomplishing the same task. And I always have a softer approach. Um, I said, what if we can create, you know, uh, funny texts or funny emails? Um, what if we can um, create a culture where we have some social currency or some social responsibility? Um, and can we cultivate that? Now, I won't say that that's easy. So um, trying to get that social currency um, to work, if you couple that with a little bit of technology, I think it's possible. And I think in the end, um, it gives you the ability, again, to deliver something that is exceptional. You're, you know, when you're getting beyond your limits or you're escaping your limits, um, I think what you're really trying to do is you're trying to escape the norm. Right. right? And that, that norm is, it's, I mean, it's uh, permeated throughout the fitness industry. And so trying to find those other avenues, um, not so easy, but I think, I think with the right culture, you know, and, and a bit of technology, I think anything's possible. Yeah. Well, if anyone wants, if anyone's interested in workout bar, finding more, maybe is, is it something you, you're, you're franchising or you? We will about, be. Yes, you will absolutely. Be. Yeah. Okay. And where, where, how do people find, if there's someone sitting there saying, I want, I want this in wherever, where, where they, do they? They can they email, out? contact us at workoutbarfitness.com. Okay. And that okay. email will come directly to right, me okay. and then I'll touch base with them. Okay. Great. Well, good luck. Um, thanks very much for inviting us down and for, for being part of it. I uh, look forward to seeing some exciting things in the future. And uh, yeah, th thank you again. Thanks yeah. very much. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, hey, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, then please go over to iTunes and subscribe to the Escape Your Limits podcast. Leave a review, leave a comment. It really would help us a lot to continue to keep these going.